uh, neurological levels. So what are the neurological levels? So uh, the neurological levels are uh, basically a pyramid. And this is a hierarchy. And, and actually, like, it reflects how we live, right? So on the bottom of the hierarchy is our environment. This is where we're living right now. And we're going to go with each one of these in detail. So we really get a, an idea of it. So here's your environment. Now, your environment, when you're a small person, it's a child, informs your identity and informs your belief structures. Um, it informs your capabilities, right? Uh, you know, and it, all of those things impact your behavior. And your behavior also attracts the environment, the people, the friendships that you have. So if you behave a certain way, you're going to attract people that are similar to you. Um, so in this way, the environment informs us all the way up. Okay. And now it works the other way also. So when you want to make change, we, we can't make change at the level of environment if you don't like your environment. You have to do something. You have to behave like changing your environment as an example. Now, well, you can change your environment, but sometimes that might not be enough because you might recreate the same environment. And everyone knows the saying that you can't run away from your problems. They'll just follow you. And that's kind of the idea here is that, well, you're going to have to change. Just changing your environment is not enough. You're also going to have to change your behavior, right? Um, and so this is why this model is so uh, effective. When you're looking at what your goals are, or what you want to accomplish in, in, in life, uh, or what's valuable to you, what type of life you want to live, um, you could look at these models and you could figure out where uh, you're more or less stuck, what's holding you back. Like, for example, um, maybe you you don't have the capabilities to run a successful business and you need to learn the right skills. And so you go out and you learn the right skills. Uh, as an example, and then you're able to, like, say, sell better or market better, uh, or be make better landing pages, whatever that that thing is that you're looking to do. Uh, so you work on the level of capabilities. When you go to a university or college, that's what you're doing. Um, and then your capabilities, you improve them, and now you're able to do different types of work. You're able to live in different types of environments. In other words, work for different companies and so on. And so now let's go through each one of these. First, your environment. And so your environment is obviously your physical space and where you're living. Uh, it's also your situation, okay? And that includes your life situation, like uh, what are your relationships like? What's your health and what's your body? And what's your fitness level like? What's your mental health like? Uh, what's your financial situation like? Um, all of this informs what your overall environment is. Uh, this includes work, family, friends, fun, what you do in your alone time. <laughs> That's part of your environment. And then the ideal environment this is something you need to think about. What is my ideal environment? What environment do I want to be in? And what's the point of it? What value is it within that ideal environment? What will that ideal environment let me do that I can't do otherwise? And usually that deals with relationships and it also deals with opportunities. So when it comes to uh, uh, moving towards our ideal environment, those are the things that we want more often is opportunity, relationships, or maybe something like beauty. You maybe want a really beautiful environment. So uh, next one up is going to be behavior. And now, what sort of actions and how are you acting in the world? In other words, like, well, first and foremost, what do you do on a regular daily basis? When you wake up, when you go to work, um, or if you're working for yourself, whatever the situation is, maybe you're just working at home or, or even when you're hanging out with friends, whatever it is that you're doing, whatever action that it, that's taken place, how does it feel, okay? Uh, is there a resistance to it or is there a flow? Do you lose yourself in it? Um, also, in, in a more meta way, uh, do you have bad habits? What are two or three things that you wish you didn't do behaviorally? And uh, what, are, are, what are some actions that you know you should be doing that you're not? So all these things kind of are within that behavioral level. Things that we're doing, how we're doing those things, things that we're, we, we shouldn't be doing that we're doing and things that we're we want to be doing that we're not. <laughs> and so that'll kind of inform us. And now next is uh, our skills and capabilities. Because our skills and capabilities inform what we're able to do, right? If we don't have the skill to do something, uh, like I don't have the skill to speak French, I can't execute that behavior. So um, your skills and capabilities are going to include your talents, the things that, uh, like your skills, your education, your competency, like your EQ or IQ. Um, also, your self-awareness, like how self-aware are you? That's 
that could be a, a trained or a learned skill. And next, now the next level up is going to be uh, values and beliefs. Now skills answer the question of how you should do something. Behavior is what you should be doing. Environment is where and when you should be doing it, right? So now the values and beliefs, even though they're two very different things, they answer the same question. And the question that they answer is why? Why you want to be doing something? Why you want to be moving towards a, in a certain direction, okay? Now, the relationship between the two is very interesting, okay? And it's because they, A, they inform each other, but more importantly, values are nested within beliefs, which means that beliefs are on a higher level uh, within a hierarchy uh, than values. And it's, the, and it's the beliefs that inform the values. And so if you look at this slide, you kind of get an idea of, of, of how this works, is that you have certain beliefs about the world the nature of the world, okay, and by extension, what's possible within the world. And you have also beliefs about yourself and who you are and what's possible for you. And these things come together and they give you something of value that you could move towards. That might be success or security. Uh, and usually value values are one word, uh, you know, success, security, <laughs> okay, power, um, uh, Etc. So these things could just be the things that you're moving towards, typically one word. And then the value, your, your belief structure outside of it supports that value. So next is uh, your identity, because, well, where do these things come from? Or what are they tied to ultimately? And that's what well, they're tied to you, right? And your identity is basically your concept of yourself. These, it's every thought that you have about yourself okay is a piece of information about your identity okay and uh this includes obviously your self-concept it includes your core beliefs that you have about yourself and and by extension the world okay what type of place the world is um the roles that you have in life in this world that you inhibit so for example you might have a number of different identities most of us do and most of the time, these are our identities are on a hierarchy. For example, uh, you might be a father and a business owner and a husband and a son and a brother, etc. Right. And so you have a bunch of diff different roles and you might be a leader at your community and and uh, you might be like ping pong champion of uh, of your country. But, you know, so you have like all these different roles and you identify with each one of them. And so it becomes a core part of who you are. Right. Um, whenever something is unique or different about a person, uh, that typically is something that people could begin to identify with and incorporate within their identity. So here's an example of someone's identity. Uh, and I picked this one on purpose because it's, uh, it's something that a lot of people would esteem towards. Uh, entrepreneur, wealthy, uh, father, son, brother, he's fit and healthy, this person. Always right, hardworking, competitive, winner, rationalist, materialist. That's kind of like his value system and how he sees the world. Uh, Harvard MBA. And you can see how these things tie in together, right? He's a rationalist, materialist. And so wealth uh, is, is something that would appeal to him quite a bit, right? He's hardworking. So, um, it, you know, that fits an entrepreneur or an MBA uh, because it's hard to do those things if you're not hardworking. Um, he has this uh, always right sort of mentality. And you could see how also these different things would, uh, you know, contradict w w with each other or how there would be, um, uh, how the person could be pulled in two different directions, how there could be conflicts between these two, uh, these identities. An example might be that, that the uh, son, you know, the father, uh, his family relationships pull, pull on him in one direction and his work pulls him in another direction and then he has to make a sacrifice. Does he sacrifice work or does he sacrifice family because he can't do both, right? Uh, also the values and the, the, and the way he behaves within these two different environments, one being family and one being work, could be very, very different. For example, like always being right and, 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 and being very competitive winner works really well if, uh, if you're an entrepreneur, for example, but maybe it doesn't work well at all when you're in the family environment. And so those are also things that, that kind of clash, right? And so um, now the identity 
overall is going to take this all into and, and kind of encompass it under one egoic structure. Now, the identity isn't the top of the pyramid, right? Because, uh, well, life extends beyond us, right? You're not the only person that exists. <laughs> um, and, and everything that we know, more or less, we, is, is things that we've been informed uh, through our life experiences and learnings and so on. And so um, when we think about vision and purpose, we want to think about what is it that extends beyond me? Uh, what am I a part of that's bigger? Um, and we have to get an idea of what the bigger picture looks like. And that's essentially what vision is. Vision is the ability to see the bigger picture. And also to see our place within that bigger picture. Because then once we could see the bigger picture, our place within the bigger picture, we can get, it informs us how to move forward. And, and to move forward in a way that's complementary. So we're not sacrificing either side uh, to the detriment of the other. So uh, here's an example uh, of how we're connected to, um, how, uh, you know, to the bigger picture. So even, and this it goes from all the way from the small to the large, right? Your cells and your atoms, uh, so atomically, um, and I'm not a physicist, but this is common knowledge that um, subatomical particles kind of exists all over the place all at once, and they're moving in and out of existence. And those things are a part of you. Uh, at a certain level of existence, you are a collection of subatomical particles. And if those collection of subatomical particles were to come in contact with, let's say, uh, something that had radiation on it, like a rock or something like that, it would impact you in a very real way. And so we can't just say that the subatomical particle world doesn't count because we don't experience it, because we can experience it, right? And radiation poisoning would be one example. Uh, on a cellular level, well, we exist uh, as well. And, and when you get sick, it's basically th that's something happening on a cellular level. Uh, when you go up a level, like our body in the world is dependent on food, water, and oxygen, in the same way that a fetus is dependent on its mother for food, uh, water, um, and oxygen. And so, and then we go up to the level of the mind, like, well, you, you grew up in a culture, you learned a specific language, uh, you were introduced to a number of different value and belief systems, right? And so you didn't just grow up uh, independent of all these things, you grew up inside of those things. And, and, and those things are now inside of you. And so, and those things are bigger than you because they were here way before you were and they'll be here way after you, right? And so in this way, that a large part of our mind isn't even really independent it's part of the more collective mind that we're a part of. And, um, and, this, and this is really easy to see. Or, <laughs> and I'm sure you've heard the stories where two inventors create the same thing around the same time in different parts of the world with ever, without ever communicating with each other. What it happens is because, well, we overlap on the level of mind. We overlap with their values and with their culture and with their language, which allows us to communicate with each other in the first place. But we also overlap in our imagination. Right. If you at all think there's some truth to there never being an original idea, meaning that someone else has thought the ideas that you thought, well, that's an example of how our imagination overlaps. Right. So if someone else is thinking those same things and we're thinking them over here, they're thinking them over there. That's an example of how the mind is bigger, just uh, bigger than just what we experience. Um, and then the world, like your entire environment is being supported by something bigger right now. You're, for example, um, sitting comfortably in front of a screen watching this video. <laughs> uh, you know, your entire physical world is in good order. There isn't war happening. Um, it's probably a, a, a friendly environment. It's not too hot or too cold. Uh, you're protected from the elements. Um, most likely, you can plug your computer in so you're pro pro protected and, and empowered by the electric grid, which is producing electricity in real time by people all over the world that are supporting the system. So, so you're part of this bigger system that's literally supporting you right now. Um, and then obviously, the, uh, on a universal level, uh, nothing is ever created or destroyed. So in some sense, some part of you will always exist. And we, we're literally made of uh, stardust. So those are the ways that we're, we're connected to something bigger. And what we want to do is we want to find the bigger thing that, I, that, that appeals to us the most, you know, what our ideals are. And then we want to connect that part up with our identity, right? And so in this case, we're looking at this area right here between vision and identity. And we want our vision, we want this bigger picture to inform our, our, um, 
uh, our personhood. And here's an example, like, uh, you know, the big self is looking for that bigger, uh, more purposeful uh, vision of the world. And once we have that bigger picture, we want it to inform the little self, uh, us on an individual level that needs to survive, and inform it how it could do so, and how it could do both. And that's when we have harmony. That's when we can, we can flow with life. Because we're being, we're supporting the bigger picture by taking small actions, and in 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 in, in a very real way, that is the utopic version of capitalism, is that you find something that society needs and you create it, and so by you creating it, you're serving the greater good, um, and so you can take it that way. Think of it that way, and so now let's move forward to alignment. So. This is how the alignment alignment works. So we want to start from on top and we want to move down. Okay. And so once we identify what our ideal vision is, what our ideals are, um, and what we're, who we're doing this for and for what, then we want to move down. And then we want to think about our identity and how our identity reflects our ideals. Because there's going to be a uh, there's going to be a deep connection because what well, one you're the one seeing those ideals so they mean something to you okay and so you want to look for ideals that are meaningful to you and they give you this purpose um, and then that can help become part of your mission so your higher ideals are now directly connected with your identity and and who or what you are on these two levels okay and now this can move down into your values because it can become something that you move towards and then you have to align the right belief systems and structures around it so so you could move towards it in a way that's uh, flowing <laughs> and, and and what that means is that you want to make sure that you don't have any limiting beliefs that are preventing you from moving forward towards that value um, and then you want to make sure that you have the right capabilities Right, so you can actually do the work, and it's aligned. And you also also want to make sure that it's aligned with your personality traits, so there isn't any uh, inner resistance, and it's actually the way that you like to solve problems anyway. Um, and then you want to make it into a daily habit or routine. You want to have a plan. You want to have an, and take action. And that's where it happens on the behavioral level, where you figure out what you need to do, what tasks you need to do, and then the environment is like where and when are you going to do it, uh, and that becomes that last step and so that's basically how we align from top to bottom okay and um, well you can take this model now you can think of it the other way around as well and if you're having a hard time uh, moving towards your goals or, or um, living out your values well why is that maybe you might be stuck in one of these on one of these levels so you might be stuck in the uh, your behavior you just can't get to around to doing it and so uh, if you're stuck at the level of behavior, you know, then you ask yourself, do you have the right skills and capabilities? So if you do, you go up a level. Do you, do you have limiting beliefs about, about this? Is there something that's holding you back? How do you feel about doing it? What thoughts come to mind when it comes to you taking action? Um, and so all these things could be... Um, there could be limiting factors. Your identity could hold you back. Your beliefs and your capabilities and behavior and environment, all these things could hold you back. Or they could be resources. Your identity, your vision, your beliefs, uh, values, capabil capabilities, behavior, environment, all these could be uh, resources. So it's up to you whether they're limitations or resources. And ideally what you want to turn is you want to turn all of them on into resources that are aligned with one another. And so... Uh, big picture, this is how we're going to be using the system. So what I'm going to do over the next few lessons is going to show you how exactly we're going to go and do each of these things. So welcome to part two.